my name is Greg, welcome to episode 4 of 3D Pokemon like game in Unity. So in the last episode we have introduced a way to move between scenes, but there is an issue with it. Let's change our inner room a little. Make the placeholder for the door. Now, if I move into this room, you will see nothing. You will actually be falling into the void. The reason is actually when you move between scenes, you will preserve your position. So if the exit and new location is not aligned, it will cause your character to appear in undesirable location. To fix this, we want to introduce a way to communicate where your character should appear when he is changing locations. Open room scene and create an empty object called entrance waypoint. The position and rotation of this object will be used to define the position and rotation of the character when he enters this scene. Then we need to make sure a character knows where he should appear on this scene using the entrance waypoint. To do this, create a new empty object called scene. This object will contains all the relevant information about the scene, like for example an entrance waypoint. Create a new component called scene info container. Inside declare a list of entrance waypoints. And now we can reference the waypoint on the scene. Good. So let's go back to the town. Right now we move between scenes by using calling swapping scene through interactable object. To be able to move between multiple scenes, we want to make more advanced scene manager for the gameplay. So create a game manager object on the essential scene. Then create another new component called game scene manager. Do not call it scene manager to avoid conflict with Unity scene manager. Open the newly created script. Remember that we have two scenes at all time, essential scene and environment scene. So essential scene will always stay active. Meanwhile, we need to know what environment scene we are exploring at the moment. So let's make a variable called current environment scene. So we need to detect which scene is our current environment scene. So on the start, call and create new method called detect current environment scene. Inside this method, we want to find out the name of the environment scene. Cycle through all active scenes to find out on which environment scene we are right on. Let's 
Let's introduce an exception for essential scene because we know that our essential scene is not the environment scene. If it is an essential scene, we skip the iteration of the cycle using continue. Make sure, 100% sure, that the spelling of essential scene is exactly correct. If it's not an essential scene, then we found our environment scene, and we can save the name of this scene into the variable. So let's check this. But our environment scene variable is not serialized, because it's not marked with serialized field attribute, or it's not public. It's not showing up in the inspector. Inspector only shows serialized variables. But you can still check them by switching into debug view. And you can see we have detected that our environment scene is down. Good. Please consider supporting me on Patreon. You will get cool perks like being featured on the screen with other people who help to make this show going. Or access to project files on Patreon. So now let's create a new public method called switch environment scene. Pass the name of a new scene as a parameter. We already have a process of switching scene inside the change scene interact. Move it into the newly created method inside game scene manager. We will unload the current environment scene, load the new scene and set the current scene variable to be the new environment scene. And we need to call the switch environment scene from the change scene interact. This is not a very optimal way to approach this problem. We have to do this because our game scene manager and interactable object is not placed on the same scene. Don't worry, we will come back to this implementation very soon to change it for more optimal approach. Create variable to define which scene is the target scene when you interact with this object. In the Unity, set the name of the scene on the interact object. And we can see our updates scene change works. But still same issue. We fall into the void because our new scene doesn't know where to place our character after transitioning to a new area. On the town scene we have a scene info container with its waypoint. But there is an issue. You see, when you load a new environment, you are doing this asynchronous. Meaning, it is done in the background. Meaning, before the scene loading is complete, we cannot use the waypoint. So, before trying to access the scene info container, we must make sure that the previous scene has been unloaded and new scene has been loaded into the memory. To make this work, we will use coroutine. Save the string we passed as a parameter into locally stored variable. Then create a new method for coroutine. Inside, we will start the async load and unload of the scene. And we can store the reference to the progress of the process of loading the scene. 
which make it possible to wait until the loading is complete. By checking if loading is complete. And then we will be able to easily find the scene info container on the scene and use it to get and move our character into the waypoint position. So we have a reference to the waypoint object. Now we need to assign the position and rotation of the object to our character. We need to reference the player transform to the game scene manager. So we can access the and change the player position in the world when we move between scenes. And now, when you switch scenes, you want to use coroutine instead of directly loading scenes. I nearly missed this small issue. We need to load our scene additively. Let's test this. There is occasionally weird unpredictable behavior if we use player transform. So instead of modifying position of the player transform, we will use rigid body. It gave me better results. I will look into this problem between this and next episodes, where we will finalize this system. Good. Let's make it possible to return out of the room scene. Set the red cube as our interactable object. Set it to be change scene interact. And target scene will be returned to town. So, remember, each of the environment scene will have the scene info container to store all the necessary information about the scene on it. So, let's prefab the scene object. I removed this reference from the prefab, which will kill the reference on the scene. So, fix it. Now go back to the town and set up the waypoint for the moment when you return out of the room. Let's test this. To remove the weird awkward fall after the move between scenes, change the elevation of the waypoint.
Good. This is it for this episode. Special thank you to Stray Chelzo. With best regards, see you in the next episode.